after studying this module you shall be able to understand what brand equity means know about the factors that create brand equity in consumers mind understand the ways to measure brand equity and identify various branding strategies every brand manager wants his brand to be regarded favorably by consumers and people at large and efforts are made to build brand equity for this very reason we shall understand the concept of brand equity now and see the various factors that affect brand equity and creation of favorable brand equity it is also necessary to measure brand equity from time to time and to maintain it so we shall see the ways in which managers can measure brand equity and discuss also different branding strategies that are available to a brand manager first let's see what brand equity means in very simple terms brand equity is the value of a brand if you look at a formal definition the american marketing association defines brand equity as brand equity is a phase used in the marketing industry to try to describe the value of having a well known brand name it's based on the idea that the owner of a well known brand name can generate more money from products with that brand name than from products with a less well known brand name as consumers believe that a product with a well known brand name is better than products with less well known names brand equity may be composed of tangible or intangible value tangible value in terms of price premium or increased cash flow for the firm intangible in terms of awareness or goodwill generated by the brand name the most important thing to remember however is that it is customers who build brand equity many academicians and marketers in fact refer to it as customer based brand equity to reflect the importance of customers in this concept brand equity is crucial for firms while on one hand it allows firms to charge higher price for their products on the other hand it also helps reduce costs because managers of well entrenched brands need not make very heavy investments in advertising and marketing by virtue of the brand already being so established in the market in any case of issues with brand the customers are also able to forgive it more easily due to their loyalty for the brand brand equity takes years to build and once a brand has favorable brand equity it needs to be maintained at that level let's look at stages of familiarity that customers have with a brand the first step is when customers become aware of a particular brand they may hear its name in advertisements they may hear it from their friends or acquaintances or even from retailers after this stage of brand awareness comes the stage where customers start recognizing the brand upon hearing its name or looking at its logo or packaging once customers are sufficiently interested in the brand versus competition they may start to try out the brand and see for themselves what it is all about so this is the third stage of trial in the fourth stage after trial if consumers find a brand satisfactory and they, it lives up to it, their expectations then they start preferring the brand over other brands in the same category they start purchasing it repeatedly and they also start connecting with the brand the last stage of familiarity is that of loyalty which is where customers view the brand as the only one which can fulfill their specific needs at this stage customers are even willing to undertake efforts to procure the brand and have formed a deep emotional connection with the brand let's look at the factors that contribute to building brand equity there are many factors that contribute to brand equity and the central idea remains that the brand is built around an offering that customers actually want first of all the brand should be seen as valuable by customers 
customers should perceive it as adding value to their day to day lives. It should solve some of their problems. It should be readily available and that too at a justified price. Secondly, the brand should offer something distinct from competition while being relevant to customers all the time. This is where a brand's positioning plays an important role. A brand that has been able to identify and plug a price value positioning that has been so far overlooked by competition will succeed in standing out amongst others in the same category. Third, a brand needs to ensure that it performs at a level that it has already promised to its customers through its marketing communications. If the brand fails to deliver on customer expectations, its image is bound to suffer. It should be a brand manager's endeavor to provide satisfactory performance at every point of contact of the brand with its customers. The fourth point is that brands need to engage with customers. They need to create contexts beyond the utility of the product that gives an opportunity to customers to bond beyond the usage of the product. We can take the example of Harley Davidson with Harley Owners Group. Let's look at how we can measure brand equity. There are two main approaches to measuring brand equity and it depends on the point of view one takes to what brand equity construct is seen as. When viewed as a tangible financial asset of the firm, brand equity is measured using financial models. But often brand equity is seen more conceptually as a customer based construct. And in this case, it is the impact and the emotional connection that it has with consumers which is measured. To this end, marketing research is of great use. Marketing research is widely used to measure brand equity and both forms of marketing research that is qualitative and quantitative techniques are used. Researchers try to measure the level of consumer knowledge about the brand. Qualitative research techniques such as free association, projective techniques, observation of consumers using and interacting with the brand are used to understand consumer knowledge and sources of brand equity. On the other hand, quantitative techniques focus on measuring brand knowledge amongst a larger group of people with some amount of statistical confidence. Measures of brand awareness, recognition, recall and image are used. These are also accumulated over a period of time to understand how consumer brand knowledge changes. Every brand manager wants his brand to be regarded favorably by people at large and indispensable by its target consumers. Efforts to build brand equity are taken towards this direction. It is a never ending process and requires commitment from the brand manager. In this module, we shall understand the concept of brand equity in detail and also see the various factors that affect the creation of favorable brand equity. It is also necessary to measure brand equity from time to time and to maintain it. We shall see the ways in which managers can measure brand equity. Also in this module, we shall discuss the different branding strategies available to the brand manager. An important question we will answer through this module is what is brand equity? In simple terms, brand equity is the value of a brand. The American Marketing Association defines brand equity. Brand equity is a phrase used in the marketing industry to try to describe the value of having a well-known brand name based on the idea that the owner of a well-known brand name can generate more money from the products with that brand name than from products with a less well-known name. As consumers believe that a product with a well-known name is better than the products with less well-known names.
Let us see how brand equity is classified. Brand equity may be composed of tangible, price premium, increased cash flow, or intangible, that is awareness or goodwill value, and it may affect the firm positively or negatively depending on the perceptions people have about the value of the brand. The most important thing to remember is that it is the customers who build the brand equity. Many academicians and marketing practitioners refer to it as customer-based brand equity to reflect the importance of customers in this concept. This illustrates the importance of brand equity for a firm. It is crucial for the financial success of the firm. Let us elaborate on how brand equity affects the financial success of any firm. While on one hand, it allows firms to charge a price premium for their products. On the other hand, it also helps in reducing the cost. As a well-entrenched brand does not need to make very heavy investments in marketing and advertising by virtue of its already established brand value. In case of any issues with the brand, the customers are also able to forgive it more easily due to their loyalty for the brand. Brand equity takes years to build and once a brand has favorable brand equity, it needs to be maintained. As mentioned earlier, brand loyalty contributes to favorable brand equity. The following section of the module explains the stages of familiarization customers go through as they reach the stage of loyalty and thus brand equity for a brand. The different stages of familiarization can be seen through this diagram. Awareness, recognition, trial, preference, and finally loyalty. Now we will discuss these stages in detail one by one. The first stage is awareness. At first, the consumers become aware of a particular brand. They may hear its name in the advertisements, from acquaintances or from retailers. The second stage is recognition. At this stage, the customers start recognizing the brand upon hearing its name or looking at its logo or packaging. The next stage is trial. Once sufficiently interested in the brand versus the competitors, customers may try out the brand to see for themselves what it is all about. The fourth stage is preference. If after trial, the customers find a brand satisfactorily living up to their expectations, they start preferring it over other brands in the same category. They purchase it repeatedly and start connecting with the brand. The last stage is loyalty. At this stage, customers view the brand as the only one which can fulfill their specific needs. They are willing to undertake efforts to procure the brand and have formed a deep emotional connection with the brand. Let us now try and understand the sources of brand equity. What creates the favorable brand equity in customers' minds? There are many factors that contribute to brand equity. But the central idea remains that the brand is built around an offering that customers actually want. The first factor to consider is that the brand should be seen as valuable. Customers should perceive it as adding value to their day-to-day -day lives. It should solve some of their problems and be available readily at a justified price. If this is not the case, they would not want to invest time and money in procuring the brand. Secondly, the brand should offer something distinct from its competitors while being relevant to the customers. This is where a brand's positioning plays an important role. 
a brand that has been able to identify and plug a price value positioning that has been so far overlooked by its competitors will succeed in standing out amongst the others. With judicious use of marketing communications tools, the firms can convey how different its offering is from the rest. Thirdly, the brand needs to ensure that it performs at the level promised by it to the customers through its communications. If the brand fails to deliver on the customer's expectations, its image is bound to suffer. It should be a brand manager's endeavor to provide satisfactory performance at every point of contact of the brand with its customers. The fourth factor to consider is that the brands need to engage with the consumers. They need to create context beyond the utility of the product that gives an opportunity to its consumers to bond over their usage of the brand. Harley Davidson's Harley Owners Group or Apple's user forums are examples of engagement with the consumers that takes the brand loyalty to the next level. As consumers become familiar with a brand and experience its special place in their lives, they form a relationship with the brand. This emotional connection ensures that they consider no other offering as a substitute to their preferred brand. Such deep loyalty greatly contributes to the brand equity. It is clear from the discussion still now that the firms need to track their brand equity. Therefore, now we will move on to understand how the brand equity is measured. There are two main approaches that can be followed to measure brand equity. And these depend on the point of view one takes of the brand equity construct itself. When viewed as a tangible financial asset of a firm, brand equity is measured using financial models, but often it is seen more conceptually as a customer based construct. And in this case, it is the impact and emotional connection it has with the consumers that is measured. To this end, marketing research is of great use. Marketing research is widely used to measure brand equity. Both qualitative and quantitative research come handy. Research tries to measure the level of consumer knowledge about the brand. By understanding the utility of a product and comparing it with the overall utility of the brand, researchers are able to uncover the value of the brand. Let us study the different research techniques in detail. Qualitative research techniques such as free association, where respondents are asked to say whatever comes to their mind upon hearing a brand name or the projective technique where indirect questioning helps uncover true opinions of customers about a particular product. An observation of customers using and interacting with a brand are used to understand consumer knowledge and sources of brand equity. Quantitative techniques, on the other hand, focus on measuring the brand knowledge amongst a larger group of people with statistical confidence. Measures of brand awareness, recognition, recall, and image are used. These are accumulated over a period of time to understand how consumer brand knowledge changes. Let's look at various branding strategies that are available to a manager. A branding strategy is a decision taken by a firm on how to structure its brands within consumer markets. Some common branding strategies we are going to discuss now. The first one is individual branding. In this strategy, firms give individual brand names to all the offerings they have. Each offering has its own identity. Separate branding and marketing efforts are required to establish each brand. 
This translates into greater investment by the firm and it also allows for greater flexibility to establish a unique brand image and take individual branding decisions. The second strategy is using the company's name. This establishes each offerings connection to the parent company and is used best when the company name carries a lot of trust and equity. The big advantage for this strategy is that the firm does not need to spend a marketing and advertising budget on creating a separate identity for each offering as the qualities of the parent brand are automatically transferred to each offering. But the flip side or the problem is that any issue with the parent brand is going to reflect badly on all its offerings. The third approach is using a family brand name and it is used for offerings in one or more categories but it is not necessarily the parent company name. The fourth approach is ingredient branding which is one strategy that is widely used by marketers of offerings that are ingredients for products meant for end consumers. By branding and marketing the special ingredient to end consumers, they are able to pressurize firms to use that particular ingredient as consumers demand it. A very common example of this is Intel microprocessors. Thank you. After studying the techniques to measure brand equity, let us now turn our attention towards the concept of branding strategy. A branding strategy is a decision taken by a firm on how to structure its brands within the consumer markets. Branding strategy decisions are important and need careful thought as the firm needs to stick to them for a long time. Some of the branding strategies are individual branding, using the company name, using family brand name, and lastly, ingredient branding. Now let us discuss these in detail. The first branding strategy is individual branding. In this strategy, firms give individual brand names to all the offerings they have. Each has its own identity. Separate branding and marketing efforts are required to establish each brand name. While this means greater investments by the firm, it also allows for greater flexibility to establish unique brand image and take individual branding decisions. The main examples of this kind of strategy are Procter & Gamble's brands like Vix, Whisper, Tide, Ole, Pampers and Panty. All these brands are individually handled. The second type of branding strategy is using the corporate or the family brand name. In this case, a firm decides to use the company name for all its offerings instead of a separate brand name. This serves to establish each offering's connection to the parent company and is best used when the company name carries a lot of trust and equity in the market. The big advantage of this strategy is that the firm does not need to work on creating an identity for each offering as qualities of the parent brand are automatically transferred to each offering. But the flip side is that any issue with the parent brand reflects badly on all its offerings. An example of company brand name strategy is of Tata Group with Tata Motors, Tata Consultancy Services, Tata Power, Tata Steel, Tata Telecom, etc. Another example is that of Virgin Group with Virgin Atlantic, Virgin Radio and Virgin Mobile, etc. As one can see, the generic name is suffixed to the parent company's name to differentiate various offerings. The third type of strategy is using the corporate or family brand name to endorse a sub-brand. Another common approach is to use the corporate or family brand name to endorse a sub-brand. Such a sub-brand 
is used for offerings in one or more related categories. For instance, Nestle has a sub-brand name Maggie within which are offerings of Maggie noodles, Maggie ketchup, Maggie soups, etc. It also has Nescafe with Nescafe Gold, Nescafe Classic, Nescafe Ice Cafe, and so on. In this type of branding strategy, the sub-brand name represents similar products and branding decisions affects all the products within the same family. Endorsements by the corporate brand add credibility in the eyes of the customers. The last type of branding strategy is the ingredient branding. This strategy is a special one used by the marketers of offerings that are ingredients for products meant for end consumers. By branding and marketing the special ingredient to the end consumers, they're able to pressurize firms to use that particular ingredient as customers demand it. For instance, Intel with its microchips, DuPont with Lycra and Teflon. Now let us study the concept of trademarks. Since brands are such valuable assets and require painstaking efforts to build over many years, it is necessary to protect them. Most brand managers monitor how much and what is being said about the brand in public and keep brand related strategies closely guarded to ward off threat of competitors to a successful brand, such as imitation of the brand, its name, packaging, and other identifiable characteristics. Companies use the legal route. Tools such as trademarks helps the brand to create exclusivity of their product or service. A trademark is a sign which establishes the identity of the brand as separate from others. Any company infringing upon another's trademark can be held liable and legal action can be initiated against it. For instance, Burberry's signature check pattern is protected by a registered trademark, which means that anyone reproducing the same pattern in their clothing can be held liable for piracy. A trademark may be designated by the following symbols. TM, the trademark symbol, which is the letters TM for an unregistered trademark, a mark used to promote or brand goods. SM, which is the letters SM in superscript, for an unregistered service mark, a mark used to promote or brand services. R, the letter R, surrounded by a circle, for a registered trademark. Trademarks can be licensed to other companies for use as agreed upon. For example, the Lego Group purchased a license from Lucasfilm in order to be allowed to launch Lego Star Wars. Now let us summarize what we have learned through this module. Brand equity can be understood as the value of a brand. It may be composed of tangible or intangible value. Brand equity takes years to build and it is customers who build the brand equity. Customers go through five stages of familiarization, starting with awareness, recognition, trial, preference, and finally, the stage of loyalty, leading to brand equity. Firms can use a number of sources to build brand equity. It should ensure that the brand adds value to the customer's lives. The brand should offer something distinct from competitors while being relevant to the customers. The brand needs to ensure that it performs at the level promised by it to the customers. And the brand needs to engage with the consumers by creating context beyond the utility of the product. 
In this way, the consumers should be emotionally connected to the brand. Next, the brand equity can be tracked and measured using quantitative and qualitative approaches. Marketing research is widely used to measure the level of consumer knowledge about the brand. Qualitative research techniques such as free association, projective techniques and observation are used. Quantitative techniques focus on measuring the brand knowledge amongst a larger group of people with statistical confidence. Further, we learned that branding strategy is a decision taken by a firm on how to structure its brands within the consumer markets. Managers have the following branding options. Individual branding, using the corporate of the family brand name, using corporate of family brand name to endorse a sub-brand, and ingredient branding. And lastly, brands can use trademarks to protect themselves from unwanted infringement of its identity.